The MUTEC System Zeta Potential, or SZP for short, measures charge of the solid fraction in a solid liquid suspension. The device generates and detects the streaming potential of a sample by measuring its conductivity and calculating the zeta potential from these measured values. The SZP consists of a main unit, of the measuring cell, which is attached to an overflow vessel, and of a touch panel display to operate the instrument. Let's have a look and see how this instrument is used and how it works. Switch on the instrument. If you want to load stored data into the display, you can do it now. In this case, press yes, otherwise press no. Press the menu button if special adjustments for the upcoming measurements are necessary. Under parameters, you can view or change the time sequence settings of a measurement as well as the calibration factors for measuring conductivity and streaming potential. Press the menu button to return to the main menu. In the calibration menu, the so-called EL factor can be modified. The EL factor is used to calibrate the conductivity measurement of the SZP. Whenever the SZP's conductivity reading differs from an external reference value, the EL factor can be recalibrated to compensate the offset. This is done as follows. First, an SZP conductivity value needs to be measured. For this purpose, place your sample on the instrument platform and homogenize with a stirrer. Push the locking bar to release and lower the measuring cell. Then press the start button and the SZP will perform a conductivity measurement. It is recommended making a second measurement to confirm the first value. Alternatively, you may use the conductivity value taken from the previous zeta potential measurement, which is displayed in the field last value. Now, an external reference value for conductivity is required. Use a calibrated conductivity meter with the temperature compensation switched off. Note this conductivity value and type it into the conductivity field. Press OK to display the newly calculated EL factor. Let's have a look at the setup menu. Besides adjusting date and time, you can here select automatic or manual measurement. In automatic mode, the SZP runs an automated sampling procedure according to the chosen sampling parameters. In manual mode, you can control sampling via the display. As another option, you can either decide for internal conductivity measurement of the SZP or alternatively for calculation of the zeta potential with an external conductivity value. This external value may be entered prior to measurement. The SZP has two different measuring cells. The black one the standard cell is used to measure fibrous suspensions. The white one, called special measuring cell, is optimized for measuring pigment slurries or other fine dispersed samples. To open the measuring cell, place it upside down on the worktop and unscrew the suction tube. Then remove the adapter piece to access a plastic screen inside the measuring cell. This screen serves to retain and fix in position the sample solids 
in order to separate them from a filtrate. Both effects are necessary preconditions for measuring the streaming potential. The blue colored screen is the standard screen with a 300 micron fabric. If low, consistent and fast draining or fine dispersed fiber samples are to be measured, use the red colored screen with a 40 micron fabric. To reassemble the measuring cell, position the screen, push in the adapter piece with its smaller opening facing towards the screen, and screw on the suction tube until the two electrode pins are in parallel. Avoid over tightening the suction tube to prevent damage. The special measuring cell comes with a yellow screen which works as a supporting structure for a filter paper. You may use any filter paper with a suitable pore size to retain the solids of the suspension to be measured. Use the supplied punch to cut out a paper filter. Then insert the yellow screen in the measuring cell with the flat side upwards and place the filter paper on the screen. As described for the standard measuring cell, push in the adapter piece and screw on the suction tube. Now it's time to perform our first measurement. Attach the measuring cell to the overflow vessel. To this end, position the cell on the slot in the guiding bar with the electrodes facing towards you, then Push the front part of the cell into the catch of the overflow vessel and tighten the two locking bars. Connect the electrode cable to the electrodes, red to red and black to black. Similar to the conductivity measurement before, place the beaker with a 500 milliliter sample on the SZP platform. Make sure that the sample is properly homogenized. However, stir carefully to avoid the formation of air bubbles in the sample. Release the locking bar and the suction tube will sink into the sample. Now start measurement. Once measurement with the MUTEC SZP system zeta potential is started, the sample will be taken in from the beaker by vacuum and transferred through the suction tube into the centerpiece of the measuring cell. Here, the sample fibers will be collected on a screen where they form a fiber plug. Two electrodes are installed in the cell to measure the streaming potential. The upper electrode is flooded by the filtrate of the sample suspension. The vacuum applied by the instrument is at a maximum during the time of sampling. In our example, the sample contains negatively charged fibers which carry an anionic surface charge. This charge has attracted cationic counter ions from the surrounding liquid, thus establishing an electrical double layer. Under vacuum force, the movable counter ions are separated from the anionic fibers and by this displacement of charges, a streaming potential develops that can be measured. The vacuum is lowered to minus 0.2 bar, which makes the counter ions sink down. In a next step, the vacuum is increased to a value of minus 0.4 bar. The counter ions are again displaced from the fibers they surround. This up and down of the vacuum is repeated 
and the streaming potential recorded for each of these vacuum cycles. Besides the streaming potential, the SZP also measures the conductivity of the sample, as well as the vacuum difference that generated the streaming potential. Out of these three values, the zeta potential is calculated. In case of slight and non-sticky contamination, it might be sufficient to flush the complete measuring cell under tap water. Rinse the measuring cell also with deionized water to remove ions that could have been introduced into the cell with the tap water. Carefully dry the measuring cell with a towel. Especially the electrode pins. In case of heavy contamination, or after the end of a trial series, a thorough cleaning of the measuring cell is recommended. Rinse the measuring cell under tap water and disassemble it. Then use a brush, for example a toothbrush, and a dishwashing detergent to clean all parts. Again, flush all parts under tap water thoroughly to remove residuals of the dishwashing detergent. Flush all parts with deionized water. Finally, Dry all parts with a towel and reassemble the measuring cell. Now the SZP is ready for the next measurement.